is up, everybody, and welcome to Pop Stream, the official streaming channel from your friends at Pop Culture Classroom and Denver Pop Culture Con, where your community comes together to talk about your media because this is your Pop Stream. I'm your host, Matt Slater. You can find me at Maddie Slay on Twitter and Twitch. And today we've got episode two of the Pop Stream Workshop the show where we bring in professionals and community members to teach you a skill or two. So whether you're looking to pick up a new hobby or refine your craft or take a step towards becoming a professional in the arts, the PopStream Workshop is the judgment-free place to learn. And today, I am so excited to get to introduce not one, but two new faces to you guys. I'm old news at this point, you know who I am, but two new people for you. So first, I'd like to introduce a face that you, our audience, will be seeing a whole lot more often uh, throughout future PopStream episodes, Dr. Tajan Campbell. Tajan, what's good? Hi, all. I'm so <laughs> excited to be here. I'm nervous. But excited. Uh, it's all right. It'll, it'll wear off as it goes on. I'm excited to get to hang out with you in a non-meeting setting. Usually when we're doing this, you and I are meeting about super official business. And today we could just get to hang out and be goofballs. Yes. And then the other new face that I am thrilled to introduce all of you to, uh, although some of you might already recognize them, is cosplayer Magnus Rose, who graciously agreed to come on the show and do a little demo for us all. So Magnus, who are you? What do we need to know? I am Magnus Rose. I go by Magpie Rose on most social media. You can find me at with Jeff at. See now I can't talk. <laughs> That's <laughs> you can what find happens. Me <laughs> at which gender designs on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok. I don't actually know what I what my name is on TikTok. It's probably that. <laughs> um, and I am a cosplayer full-time costume designer for theater and fan of geekery. Excellent. And which gender designs that is which like the pointy witch hat, correct? Yes. Excellent. It's, it's wordplay. I like it. I like I'm it. A witch. <laughs> I, no one knows my gender. And for those who didn't hear it before, because before I think it was just me and Tayshin that heard, what is your history with cosplay? I have been co I went to NDK after school one day with a friend because they were like, hey, I don't want to go to this thing alone. So I went and I thought it was awesome and amazing. And I went home and I made a costume and then I went in my costume on Saturday. And then I went home on Saturday because I didn't have a hotel room. Uh, <laughs> and I made another costume and then I went on Sunday and then I think I went home, I ate and then I slept until school on Monday morning. Right, and you just had to sleep it all off, right? Finally oh, yeah. Sleep. And that is the pattern I've followed ever since. And and Tajian, you dabble a little bit in cosplay yourself. Is that right? I do. I'm a cosplay dabbler. I never get to cosplay at Denver Pop Culture Con. We get to wear anything, those awesome shirts. Yeah. Anything within like a two-day drive, though, I'm there. So for both of you, what is the favorite cosplay that you've ever put together? I... My most popular recently, and the one that I had the most fun in, is Molly Mock from Critical Role. I paint myself all purple to be a tiefling, and uh, anyone who knows Critical Role can see the uh, well-documented signs uh, behind me. But I have a giant coat that I'm remaking for the third time because it requires a lot of embroidery. And I go to cons and I do card readings and I meet a lot of people and it's a lot of fun. And so that's my favorite. Like tarot cards? Uh-huh. That's awesome. That's really Tarot cool. cards and runestones. Do Just you do it. like the Rin Fair circuit at all? I, 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 ha I do. Uh, I've been as Molly Mock. No one should ever wear full body paint to Ren Fair ever. <laughs> oh yeah. I did it and I learned that Mayron uh purple paint oxidizes if you go into the sun, it turns a very pretty pale blue. Cause oh. after seven oh. hours, uh I was a very lovely shade of blue. Not I what I was going for, but would have never know. thought. <laughs> it's something that you don't really realize until you fully body paint yourself and stand in the sun for seven hours yeah and you don't really think maybe i should stand out in the sun to see if my body paint would randomly change colors <laughs> yeah that's not part of like a normal fitting no <laughs> no 
Not really. Tasia, what's your favorite cosplay you've ever put together? So I put together kind of randomly a Mad Max apocalyptic version of Wonder Woman. But I went like really gnarly with it with scars and a whited out eye and everything was made of metal. And love it. That sounds awesome. It's, it's really fun. That's one of my favorite things. It's like put a twist on a costume, right? Or when you see the the mashups of two different things together. Um, we don't have any photos of these right now. So even if you're listening on audio, you're not missing anything. But later on, we'll talk about Pop Screen, which is another program we've got coming up. So you might see these costumes with the hashtag Pop Scream for Halloween coming across your social media. I know I'll be digging up some of myself as Lady Gaga from back in college. That was a fun one. Um, Mysterion from South Park. Uh, another one of my favorites. If you're new to our channel, to PopStream, here's how PopStream operates. We are live every Thursday at 4 p.m. Mountain Time on any platform you can think of. We're live on PopStream's YouTube and Twitch channels, as well as the Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube pages for Pop Culture Classroom and Denver Pop Culture Con. And if you're watching live, you get to be a part of the show by chatting with us on any of those platforms. So you can ask Magnus questions. You can call me out when I say something dumb. Uh, you can share your own cosplay tips. You can have great conversations with the rest of the community in the chat and just ignore us all together. Uh, just tell us how your day's going. Tell us what you had for breakfast because it's all about community here on PopStream. But if you can't watch us live, we've got you covered. You can catch this show and all of the amazing uh, PopStream content on demand on YouTube, as well as on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and Google Podcasts. Just search for PopStream. And already we've got Christopher in the chat asking, what was your favorite Halloween costume or cosplay? So feel free to jump in there and let us know. Even if you're watching this on demand later, though, later on, you can still be a part of the show by emailing us at popstream at popcultureclassroom.org. That's where you can give us your questions, your recommendations for future shows and guests, or give us your take on something that we're talking about during the show. All right, well, we have... Uh, we have promised a demo today. Magnus is going to be presenting us with a cosplay demo. Magnus, what are you going to be showing us today? I am going to show my method for making easy glowing props. So before we lose yeah. audio again, let's dive into this demo. Let's uh, do Magnus, it. I would love for you to show us how, your way of creating glowing props. And Magnus will be showing us through the creation of a prop tesseract today. So in the past, I've used um, these sort of things to make gems and half circles. This is actually a wax mold from Michael's, I think it was. This is not exactly what we're going to use, but as far as ease goes, this is the easiest mold I've found because it's a pre-molded shape in heat safe plastic. So I'm actually going to be using a box that is also made out of plastic. Uh, it's two parts, but the other part I've already started working on. So we're going to start with this one. And I actually picked this up at, up at a thrift store. Oh. It had a little ceramic figure in it. <laughs> and so I broke it apart. Sadly, the ceramic figure did not survive that. Um, Is but, repurposing thrift store finds a, a big part of your, your cosplay process? 100%. Most of my stuff is made from bed sheets and uh, curtains. <laughs> Lots of fabric for very little money so we're gonna start with this and i got most of the it looks like it was sealed with hot glue i got most of it off um but our next thing will help deal with that i mostly cleaned it first because thrift stores you, <laughs> you know mm -hmm. not just I in the era of covid but you know just good practice in general well i've had this since before covid times if you can imagine uh those mythical times before. <laughs> I, I vaguely remember. So I'm going to take my sanding block. It's just a block of sandpaper that I think it's for painting. I don't actually know. I'm not a very handy person, generally. Is it a, a pretty fine grit on your sandpaper block? Yeah, it's pretty fine. Okay, so I actually used one of those for the first time. We used it to sand down a finish on a desk, so that's at least one use for it. Oh, I should do this. Mm. You know, I think the mark of a veteran oh, cosplayer is 
the ability to go through a thrift store or random places and see things and be like, I bet I could make that into a prop. Right. And I even mean, if it's like, I don't have a plan for it now, someday I know what I could this use. This could for be it. something. I'm going to use this for some costume, something at some point. I used a lampshade and a hairdryer to make Mad, Mo uh, Mad Moxie's megaphone. So there you, you go. can make anything. Fantastic. <laughs> So I'm Magnus, did you it. put on the mask just for like debris coming off of the the cube that you've got? Yeah, breathing in plastic is never good. I'd probably put on goggles if I was using um, my rotary cutter mm. or my like anything automated that will spit it back at me. I'd probably put on eye protection, but mostly I just don't want to breathe in any dust, any plastic dust, because that sounds like a bad time. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. The air is bad enough in Denver right now. We don't need any plastic in, in addition to that. That's very true. And, and I'm just sanding the inside so that when I paint it, the paint will have something to stick to. So you're actually making it a little bit rougher? Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. So that's what you meant when you said that you were going to do something that would take care of that little bit of glue that was still left. Yep, yep. Because now I can go on the edges that have the little bit of glue and get that off. Yeah, that's something that we don't think about a lot of times. We're like, oh, I'm going to paint this, but certain paints don't adhere to certain materials as well as others, for sure. What kind of paint will you be using, actually? I will be using... Nice. Sea glass. Oh. It provides a really nice um, frosted finish without being completely opaque. Okay. I've also used um, stained glass. Uh, this same brand makes a stained glass, but I really like the frosted part because when I put things inside of it later, it helps to hide mistakes. Mm. Oh, there you go one of those tricks you're like oh i messed this up it will, it's all right no one will see it it's fine yeah. <laughs> but i'm trying to leave the outside um unscathed so it's nice and shiny yeah to get that that tesseract feel to it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Nice. nice. Very nice. And that is the sanding portion. Nice and quick and simple. It's a little harder when you have uh, little shapes like this. Um, but I actually will cut pieces off of foam blocks or foam sanding blocks because they mold better than just sandpaper. Mm. So you can actually get in there into in the, the corners. Yep. Yeah. And Magnus, did so, you say you use those wax molds? They're like for candles? Say again? The molds that you use for the gems, did you say they were wax molds for candles? They are, I think they're for soap. Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, I okay. shop in both soap molds and candy molds. I think mm -hmm. these ones specifically were for soap. They happen to be the last ones here though. So I don't, when I bought them, they had like a number sticky noted onto them because they were the last ones. So I didn't <laughs> even know what they were anymore. And I'm actually going to have my lovely assistant. Ha ha ha. I have an assistant. Uh, take this and spray paint it for me. So we're going to put a nice coat of this onto this. Because nobody wants to be spray painting indoors, right? No. Uh, I used to spray paint in my basement, but now I live in my basement. Oh no. <laughs> so less of that. No amount of open windows is going to help you out there. Mm -mm. And this is the one that I have from earlier. So you oh, can this see is that. like a cooking show. You had one ready to go for us. I see, like that. That was my idea. I was like, <laughs> I've seen Cook's Country enough. I know what happens. They're like, and now we're going to cook this. And then they all of a sudden take it out. And it's done. So this is what it looks like. And you can see, like, you can see my hand through it. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's still very nice and shiny on this side, but it's very matte on the inside. And we're going to have to wait for the other side because they slide together sort of like this. So well, about how long does it take to dry? Uh, it takes... Th- usually it's... If you do thin coats, it's almost immediate. Mm-hmm. It does happen to be very cold outside right now. So we're having to spray mm-hmm. it outside and then bring it inside to be in a semi-warm environment. So three or four minutes, usually. Like I said, this is quick and dirty kind of <laughs> kind of prop making. Yeah, this is, you know, if you don't have thousands of hours to spend hand beating a, a, a costume or a prop, this is how you can get it done. It was only 700. Uh, there you go. Close enough. I rounded up. Only 700 hours. Come on. <laughs> Matt. And in the past, I've actually used the finger lights from the dollar store. If you guys have ever seen those, mm-hmm. they're, they're pretty great. They're like this big. I'll turn them on and then I'll shove them into whatever I'm working with, cover it up with scotch tape. Are we talking like what ravers would wear on the ends of their fingertips? That's exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> Did not know you could find that at the dollar store. Yeah. You find you everything find at the dollar store. <laughs> They're right next to all the glow sticks. Good to know. Um, and then also in the floral section, if you have a little bit more money, a uh, floral section of Michael's has little circular things that you put in vases with all of the glass beads and they light up. Mm-hmm. Those are pretty cool. A lot of the times though, they don't have on and off switches. They mm-hmm. have that little piece of plastic that you take out and the mm-hmm. batteries are there. And if you're really careful, you could put it back in. That's actually what I used for when I made my Zelda crown. I needed something very small and contained to go in the center gem of the crown. So mm-hmm. I just had one of those and a tiny piece of plastic packaging that I would stick in and out <laughs> to conserve uh, the battery. Yeah, because I didn't want to have to open it with a tiny screwdriver. I'm actually going to be using this lovely uh, EL wire, which I love those. which I've never used in this capacity, but I know that they work and it is blue, so it should work in the same way. If you if you guys understand. We'll find out. So I, I'm unfamiliar with this product. Can you just tell us a little bit more? Is this like a, a like a miniature light rope? Yes, it's a electroluminescent uh, wire. Okay. So it is this lovely. It's like a little light, but in a spaghetti string. Okay, that's cool. The best description ever. Spaghetti string light. <laughs> it's a spaghetti string light. You know. Um, now you kind you of wonder actually... what blue spaghetti would taste like. Ooh, now I'm thinking like raspberry <laughs> spaghetti, and I'm not here for that. Well, what about like sour sour ropes? Isn't that a candy? Yeah, there you go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like that. It's like blueberry. <laughs> and so um, you... Scott on YouTube says, we had our daughter use finger lights and glow sticks to pretend to be fireworks one year when fireworks were banned. So there you go. That's a, yeah, a quick and dirty fine. cosplay is be a firework. Now Katy Perry comes to mind. So yeah, it's just like this and it's really wonderful. I really like this because it comes with its own battery pack that you can plug it into, Mm. which means I have to do absolutely 0% of the electronics because I'm not good at them. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And we have our second half. It is not yet dry, but it is close. And it's actually way more evenly sprayed than when I did it. So I don't know how that happened. You've got a good assistant. I do. Oh, I 100% know how that happened. I forgot to masking tape the outside of this one. So Mm. it looks better. But now I'm going to have to mask. Now I'm going to have to spray the outside of this one so that they match. So Um, back to the assistant. Yeah. (laughs) So for your masking tape there, you said that you would put it on the outside just to make sure that like none of your spray paint accidentally gets on the outside. Yes. Here's my lovely masking tape ball from uh, the first time I did this the correct way. You masking taped it? I, I'm being laughed at for masking <laughs> tape. I don't own no, painter's wait. tape. No, you wait. You, was that supposed to use masking tape? You were supposed to, but it's Okay. <laughs> It's okay. We're going to fix it. It's going to be fine. 
it's still shinier on this side because I didn't sand mm -hmm. this portion. For sure. It's just not going to be as shiny as the other one. Uh, but yeah, I just took masking tape originally and put it all the way on the outside. Mm -hmm. Then it just becomes about how you hold your prop and pictures. Carefully placed at hands, cover up. I'm never going to remember. That's the thing. <laughs> Someone's going to be like, hey, why does this look different in these two photos? And be like, probably because I was throwing it up into the air and catching it over and over <laughs> again. Well, Magnus, while we wait for that to dry, would this be a, a good time to take a quick uh, advertisement break? Prime time. Do it. Excellent. So while we're waiting... I want to tell you guys about a couple of things that we've got going on at Pop Culture Classroom. So Pop Culture Classroom, the educational nonprofit behind Denver Pop Culture Con, has opened registration for a new series of virtual boot camps where you can pick up a new hobby or take the first steps to becoming a professional in the arts, much like our workshop today. So if you're looking to learn more about comic book creation or streaming and content creation, this is your opportunity to learn from professionals and build community. And there's still time to sign up. Classes meet virtually once per week for five weeks. And in addition to getting instruction from professionals, you'll also get curated resources and activities to help reinforce skills between classes. And best of all, you'll get to build community and make new friends with learners just like you. These classes are for ages 16 and up, and there are a limited number of scholarships available. And because they're virtual, it doesn't matter where you live. The magic of the internet will let you participate from anywhere. And finally, if you're a pop stream listener, we're big fans of you, especially for sticking with us as we figure out new systems. So you get 15% off of our boot camps. Just use the code POPSTREAM, that's all lowercase, P-O-P-S-T-R-E-A-M, when you check out to get 15% off. And you can learn more about those boot camps at popcultureclassroom.org slash camps. But that is not all that we've got coming up for you guys next weekend. Pop Culture Classroom and Denver Pop Culture Con and the Pop Stream team are bringing you Pop Scream, a one day streaming event to give you a taste of the con experience that we all miss so, so much. So on Friday, October 30th from 1030 a.m. to 730 p.m., we will be having a variety of continuous programming, things like publisher Scout Comics talking about how they create horror comics author Stephen Graham Jones talking about his latest books, voice actor Brian Cummings and character designer Greg Guler teaming up for some monster creation fun, and the Popstream AV Club cast is even going to make an appearance streaming the ghost hunting game Phasmophobia. And let me tell you, I am absolutely terrified. If you want to see me pee my pants on live stream, please check that out. Um, best of all, you can share your Halloween costumes and cosplay from this year or years past. It doesn't matter. Any cosplay you got, by posting to social media using the hashtag POPSCREAM. So that's the word POP and SCREAM in all caps. We'll be featuring all of your amazing costumes throughout the day and submitting your photo, uh, excuse me, and if you submit your photo and subscribe to POPSTREAM, that enters you for a chance to win a free registration to one of our boot camps. So throughout the whole event, give us your costumes, show, us, show off your cosplay using the hashtag POPSCREAM, and you will be entered into a chance to win a free registration. So look for more details across all of Pop Culture Classroom and Denver Pop Culture Con social media pages, as well as popcultureclassroom.org slash popscream. All right, Magnus, we're how's the paint doing? It's dry. Excellent. See, it's more dry. internet magic. And it matches. Huzzah. See, look at that. Beautiful. Perfect. And you're done. No. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you could be if you want <laughs> But no, I'm going to set these off to the side because we are going to, one, make sure that the batteries that worked this morning still work right now. This is lovely. It's just a little, like I said, I'm not good at electronics. I really like that I don't have to do this part. And I just plug it in and... Hey! Oh. Hey! That looks really cool. That's incredible. And then I've got this fabric that is sort of um, purple and also glowing. It's very reflective. So I'm mm. going to use this to diffuse this so it doesn't just look like a pile of spaghetti noodles <laughs> inside of a box. And that's when, a, a piece of fabric that you could probably find like on sale at Joann's, you know, nothing too expensive. Yep. It was in the scraps bucket. There you go. 
And that's exactly what I'm going to do with it. Exactly what I'm going to do is uh, cut it up into strips so that it's not, so that I can sort of manipulate it a little bit better and not have it just wrapped around. I can have multi dimensions. Mm. So taking, just taking these small little extra steps makes it look, the end product look that much better. Yeah. Cause then it will look like a ball of multiple light sources doing different light diffused things instead of, like I said, glow up spaghetti, glow up glowing spaghetti. <laughs> And that glowing spaghetti remind us what what was that product actually called? If p- other people are looking for it, it is E L wire. E L wire. And about how much was that? I got mine from Michaels for nine dollars. It is a part of uh, Kamui Cosplay. She has a bunch of foam and wire at Michaels right now. Oh, okay. So that is where I got mine. Look at that. Michael's is not just about fake flowers and cake decorating. <laughs> not today. Frames, all that good stuff. <laughs> and I'm just going to straighten it just a little. Does that hold a shape or is it a little loose? It's very loose. Okay. Oh, I see. But yeah. it also can be bent and it's not brittle, which is really nice. Mm. I've got my two pieces and they hook together like that. So I basically have to go in through one of these two spaces and get everything together. I can also use this fabric to cover my lovely little uh, operating box. Your battery box. Since it is black, you will see it. Mm. And that lovely little red light. (laughs) We could maybe like put a little masking tape on top of that light. Oh yeah. A couple different things. Yeah. That's actually probably what I'm going to do. We will use the masking tape. (laughs) It's versatile. You can use it for so many things. I'm just going to put two layers on, turn it on. And wow, that is a really strong red light because we can still (laughs) see it. It will not be diminished. It will not. It doesn't want to. Um, I'm going to hope that my camera doesn't get knocked down right now because I have a visitor. A a furry visitor? A a very furry visitor. (laughs) Yes, there it is. Freya. Freya, move. I have a furry visitor here too. (laughs) They're so cute. And they're like, what are you doing? You're talking, uh, but I don't see anyone. Mine just wants to sing the song of his people. So if you hear gurgly cat sadness. Has he never been fed or received love? Ever. ever? Never. They always act like that. Scott on YouTube also says that Electroluminescent could win a game of Scrabble. I think if you could make that word work. (laughs) How many titles do you get in a Scrabble game? I don't. Does, does 10, anyone maybe? Know? It's been a minute since i played some Scrabble. It's been a hot sec since I've played some Scrabble with my I don't know if I've ever played anything boys. beyond Junior Scrabble. <laughs> We're going to see how many layers of masking tape it takes to get this little red light to go out. And would you, if you wanted to, would you be able to just like probably cover that whole battery box in masking tape just to, because you, you mentioned that with it being black that it would might show through. Yeah, I'd actually probably if we had more time and I thought that the weather would actually work with me, I'd probably paint this either blue or white. Mm. Mm -hmm. Ha ha ha, no light to be seen. There you go. Success. Now, Magnus, are you going to secure the light box? Because you mentioned something that you wanted to be able to throw this. Does it move around well once it is all closed um it's fairly stable okay yeah you can't hear it rattling around too much no 
So it should be good. And I mostly uh, throw it up into the air, which is probably not something that I should do, but it's something that I do. <laughs> for, for the occasional photo op, right? Only when it's worth it. Uh, yeah, totally that and not just throwing it at my friends. <laughs> I met one of my favorite people because I was dressed as Loki and I had to go help someone with a photo shoot, but I had my Tesseract and I didn't really have a bag or anywhere to put it. So I looked around the room and I found a Scarlet Witch standing next to a Joker and something in my brain decided that they were the safest people that I could give it to. And so I walked up, I said, here, I handed it to her. And then I left for three hours. And I did not know her at that point. I just handed her the Tesseract and walked away. For three hours. For wow. three hours. I. But now you know that person. Yeah, she actually turned out to be... Uh, my college theater teacher oh wow yeah Ooh. i i don't know how that uh that worked out i but... found that cosplay when you see someone that like you could take a good photo op with that just brings people together you meet the cool i mean you meet cool people at con in general regardless but when you see someone that you can recognize and i'm sure you thought oh that cosplay is really well put together i can trust this person Oh, yeah, 100%. I was like, <laughs> okay, so. Quality, great. Here you go. Here's my Tesseract. Like, this is some this is some beautiful cosplay. This is a comic book version of Scarlet Witch. I know they know the lore. I know that Scarlet Witch does not need the Tesseract to be powerful. <laughs> this is the only person I can trust not to use it. And I'm just going to ignore the fact that she's standing next to a very angry-looking Joker. Um, All Jokers Scott are angry. Scott, yes, Magnus did say that on a, uh, under normal circumstances, we could totally paint that battery pack to hide it a little bit more. But instead, I'm just Ooh, uh, I see. covering it in the fabric for right now. And this is a good question. Uh, how many rolls of masking tape are needed for any cosplay prop? <laughs> the the uh, more you got, the better, right? Yeah, I mean... It's not a permanent solution, but it is a strong solution I found. Mm -hmm. um, usually I would, actually, I, I keep saying usually that I do a lot of things, but considering the fact that once this is all together, no one will see it, I have absolutely no problem with the fact that I'm making the inside of this absolutely ugly, <laughs> because that as I stated before, is exactly why we paint the outside. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to wrap this strip loosely around my EL wire before I shove it in. Okay. Okay. When I used to teach first grade uh, or elementary school gifted and talented and I had masking tape as a resource for my students, that was the first thing to disappear. Their solution was always more tape, more masking tape. That's when you get those really nice, like, masking tape monsters. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would say build a tower, and instead I would get a masking tape monster. Mm -hmm. I mean... And there's always some hair and some <laughs> mysterious fuzz and, like, carpet dust in it. Oh, especially oh, yeah, with the never youngins. Clean. Some Cheeto bits. No. Mm -hmm. Why would it need to be clean? That That sounds fake. An unnecessary step. <laughs> So Magnus, you so you're wrapping your fabric around the actual wire itself, and then you still plan to kind of like use some loosely within the box. Is that correct? Yes, to sort of hold things where I want it to be. Uh, I have my strips here, and then I have just the excess bits. You know, excess bits. Mm -hmm. Everyone needs excess bits. We all got it. So I'm just going to continue the same way. And like I said, I I would say that I would secure this in a prettier fashion, but considering that no one should ever see the mm -hmm. center of this ever, um, and if they do, the, a problem has already occurred. Something traumatic has happened to the Tesseract if we're seeing inside it. Yeah, if you can see the inside of my prop, 
it's already not good. And if the lights move around on the little bit, a little bit on the inside, that just adds some dimensionality to it. Oh yeah. That's one thing about this is that having all of the different ways that the light will refract with all of this mm -hmm. will make it very dynamic in the way that the Tesseract, the CG Tesseract is. <laughs> So while you're wrapping that, we have another really great question in the chat. They're asking, speaking of non-permanent things, what are some good supplies to have in a cosplay emergency fix kit? So let's say you put together this awesome costume, you got to con, and you know some of your quick fixes are starting to fall apart. What would you carry with you? I imagine maybe safety pins? What safety else? Pins. Yeah. Safety pins. Yeah. Safety pins, 100%. Um... I've the safety pins uh, together. I actually have a tiny iron oh. that I take places and some if I a little in something, then I can just put the stabilizer and just iron it together and pretend mm. that it's together, you know. Uh, another thing is Super, Super glue, glue is king. If, if you're committed, if you're committed to the fact that this is the way that it's going to be, get now yourself you some fast a, drying super glue. When you say a tiny iron, I'm very intrigued. What are, what are we talking like? <laughs> <gasps> there it is. Oh my gosh, a tiny iron. That's incredible. It is a very little iron. This is its travel case. It has like that side says resting the other mm. side says storage so this can be packed away and it has a place for water and everything so it's really wonderful it's that's amazing it is like i said it is a tiny iron <laughs> yeah i remember working with some of that stabilizing fabric when i used to do costume design in college uh, i'm trying to remember what it's called now it's been a long time interfacing interfacing thank you i use some fusible interfacing there you go because there is the stitch on kind. That kind will not help you in an emergency. <laughs> unless you are very quick. I feel like my professors would be so upset with me for not remembering that. It's been a decade, to be fair. To be fair. Uh, that That is to be fair. something that can be forgotten, I suppose. And what are we going to use to end this? Masking tape is my guess. Yeah, that's a really good guess. <laughs> so again, all of this to show that if you want to get started in cosplay, maybe you've been a little uh, hesitant to get started. You do not have to be a professional seamstress or know how to operate a sewing machine. Hot glue and masking tape can get you a long way. That's true. I made, I made my first set of gauntlets for a Boba Fett cosplay by going to Lowe's and looking for bits and just gluing them on. There you go. So much fun. You can just find things that work. All right. So it looks like we are assembling the test the Tesseract now. We are. I we almost are feel like we need to. music. Oh no. YouTube no music. won't like that. Twitch won't like that. Twitch is going after people right now. Everyone think about like the theme from <laughs> 2000 the Space Odyssey as it comes together. <laughs> I'm not even sure if I'm allowed to like hum certain things. <laughs> so we have this. It's actually really hard to see right now because I have five lights on <laughs> right now. Um, let's see if I can. I was to say, can any of those come off? Because I, I can almost see the, the glowing see rope inside. Let's see if I can. <gasps> Ooh. Ooh. Let's see. Ah, there we go. <laughs> and the ears to just to yeah. round well, that out looks the image. Spectacular. That's awesome. And I can see what you said about the sea glass and that you can yeah. see through it. See some, you can see through it, but you can't see. It's not completely sure. transparent. Mm -hmm. A little translucent. But it does give that nice, it does give that nice, like, there you can see that lovely uh, 
bit. The way that uh -huh. it's yeah, that fabric adds a lot on the inside. Mm -hmm. Now you Very, used this this, and I found that going in ways. That sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Strands. No, that's it. I'm, I'm good. Yeah. I was just saying, what were you saying? You used your our rope light here. Um, what other? If if I had like some old Christmas lights lying around that I could fit in that box, or you know, other type of lights, uh, would that work just as well? One hundred percent. You might need to use a different type of fabric. I. Mm. So the thing is, I was okay with using the lights that were very stringy because when I think about the Tesseract, it always has those sort of mm -hmm. sh strings of light and energy. If you make something that is not as stringy, you would use a light and then either more or less fabric. Because if you use okay. less fabric, then you'll get something that is very defined. And if you get if you use more, then it will diffuse mm -hmm. it more. Yeah, that makes sense. You're getting a lot of praise. Yeah, the there you can see. They, they all say this looks great. It's lovely little stringy. Oh, I'm so I'm so glad. One day when I go back to a con, I will it will be able to see the light of day. And yeah, it's very it reminds me a lot of uh uh resin. Mm. because you yeah. get all of those nice things from every angle. Yeah, and of course with And cosplay, because it's not can... actually together, I'll just... Go ahead, Mames. I can just... Oh. It's easy because I masking taped everything together, so I'm not afraid to just take it out so that I can hit them. There you go. So practicality just, definitely needs just as safe to go back creating for storage. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Oh yes, because if I if I completely close this off with glue and everything, I wouldn't be able to turn it off. I wouldn't be able to change the batteries. I'm sure there are ways. I am not actually as well versed in electronics. So although I know there are ways to make lights that turn off, I think if I found a remote operated mm -hmm. LED wire, then I could definitely close this up. But having it like this sort of just gives me the ability to work through it. And also because I have that lovely fabric, I have a lot of dynamic Yeah, and we definitely, with cosplay, we encourage uh, you to play around with your materials, right? Because I'm sure you didn't just inside, start with this all... paint or with this specific light. I'm sure it kind of took a couple of tries to find something that you liked and gave you the, the effect that you're looking for. Oh, yeah. The first time I made my Tesseract, I actually used a box sort of like this, but with blue fabric and night and lights. So it was just a box with a bunch of shiny blue fabric in it. And then when we <laughs> shot it, I actually held it. my photographer's flash cam right behind it, and it flashed through. So that was pretty cool. To get those good photo ops, that's always, you got to get the tricks for the good photos. You got to do what it takes. Yeah. That's what it's for, right? Yeah, right. If you don't have the good photos of your cosplay, then that's the point. Did you even cosplay if there aren't good photos? <laughs> well, Magnus, I mean, we're there gonna are go no ahead photos and, uh, that exist uh, of my first con. Well, yeah, you were just kind of playing around, right? No, there are no photos that exist of the first three years. Yeah. It was, and then I would, of course, take everything apart to make my new costume because I had no money. Mm -hmm. So I'd be like, oh, I <laughs> used a corset for the base of this costume. I'll just rip everything off and then sew a new costume onto it. Recycling, balling on a budget. Mm -hmm. I'm here for it. <laughs> well, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. Magnus, thank mm -hmm. you so, so much for being with yes. us today and showing off your skills. Thank you, guys.
I know that there are some budding cosplayers was, out there. Uh, that are, a lot of fun. I'm sure I'm we'll really be happy. Yeah, I'm sure they'll be inspired about how to get started and create some awesome props. Um, so thank you. Is there anything that you would like to plug before we let you go here? Instagram, anything like that? Uh, follow, yeah, follow me on social media, uh, which gender designs, which as in the uh, storybook character gender as in <laughs> you all get that part and designs <laughs> because that's what I do. Uh, I love that. You can find me on Instagram. Perfect. Okay. So go give Magnus a follow. Perfect. Then we will definitely see you soon or at some point. Uh, for when the con world comes back. Um, DPCC 2021. Woo, someday we'll get there. Well, again, Magnus, thank you so much for joining us. Hey. Uh, Tajan, thank you for uh, making your debut appearance on Popstream. And we will see a lot more of you coming up. Yes. So speaking of things coming up, next week we've got the Popstream AV Club and we're going to be talking about our favorite horror adaptations. Uh, we have a local screenwriter uh, for, that will be joining us for that episode. episode. And, and then in one month, in the on the next episode of the Popstream Workshop, I am really looking forward to this one. We are going to have a cooking demo with Amy Nicole Ward and Walter Silviera, creators of the unofficial Legend of Zelda cookbook. So they have created a cookbook based on recipes from the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. I'm a huge Zelda mega fan, so I'm very much looking forward to that. Make sure I you can join wait. us for that. Um, and you can always email us at popstream at popcultureclassroom.org if you have more questions for Magnus, questions for any of the cast uh, for upcoming shows, or if you just want to tell us what you think or have ideas for upcoming shows. So if you enjoyed this content today and you like what Pop Culture Classroom does, uh, please make sure you give us a like, subscribe to the Popstream YouTube channel and podcast channels. Make sure to ring the bell to make sure you know whenever a new stream goes live and it's available on demand. And of course, share this with your friends so that we can build the best pop culture fan community on the internet. And even if you're watching this on Facebook right now, if you're watching this on Denver Pop Culture Con or Pop Culture Classroom social media, go ahead and go over to the YouTube channel, which is just youtube.com slash popstream. And please subscribe there as well as our podcast services. While every view is very much appreciated. That is where your viewership and your subscriptions and likes and things like that will make the biggest difference. So again, the pop stream channel on YouTube, as well as our podcast channels. And for all of the latest educational pop culture goodness, make sure you subscribe to the pop culture classroom email newsletter on our website. And then finally, uh, we would appreciate any sort of donation that you guys are able to provide. Pop Culture Classroom is a nonprofit, and without having Denver Pop Culture Con this year, every donation is even more vital than normal. So things that your money go toward are things like producing new issues of our history-based comic, Colorful History, scholarships for classes and camps, workshops at schools and libraries and community centers around the Denver area, just like our Lead with Comics program, which is currently happening at the local youth detention facility, where we're inspiring them to use their voice to, uh, by creating comics, and it also makes future Denver Pop Culture Cons happen. So once again, Magnus and Tasian, thank you so much for being here. All of you guys who are watching or listening live or on demand, thank you so much. You truly are the best. So until yes. next time, this has been your pop stream. Now go spread some love out there. Have fun. Bye, all. Bye.